Hello and welcome to Start Select, the world-conquering video game show from GameSpot UK. We've armed the UAV to track down the best interviews, previews and features for you this week, including Battlefield Bad Company 2, Assassin's Creed 2 Battle of Forley DLC and SPKX. GSUK out. Back at Gamescom 2009, DICE boldly claimed that Battlefield Bad Company 2 would beat Modern Warfare at its own game. Has the studio succeeded? Well, we're here in Stockholm, Sweden to find out. Foxtrot squad, we're local. Prepare for engagement. Everyone keep your eyes peeled. There's a sniper in the area. I've had a huge involvement with the multiplayer and other elements of the game, but that's been a, definitely my primary focus. I'd say the biggest improvements is our, the variety that we're going to offer at launch. You're going to have four different game modes that all really cater to different experiences. They're very unique in their own right. Uh, I'd say the amount of weapons uh, that we're offering and the way that you unlock them, the, uh, the customization and the, you know, the investment that you put into your characters uh, I think is really significant. Uh, another thing that we've really worked on vehicle control and improving the way they feel, the way they handle in the environment so that the physics are much, much better and more fun and more realistic as well. So basically the more you play with these class you get to unlock new weapons. Uh, just tell us a little bit about how that works. Yeah, so it's it's based on the kit that you're playing. So, you know, to earn that really ultra elite, you know, 50 cal for the sniper, you actually have to play as the sniper. So you earn that from experience and credibility. So, you know, you you earn the right to use that weapon. Uh, let's talk about uh, numbers for a second. What sort of, how many maps are going to be, how many classes, how many players can get involved in multiplayer? Um, for the uh, the amount of maps, we're kind of keeping that lucrative and people will reveal why, but we're really focused on supporting the game post-launch and not splitting the community. I'm not allowed to give the secrets away and stuff like that, but I think people were going to be really happy with the way the game is supported by DICE after launch. I remember playing Battlefield 1943, you personally being involved trying to get it up and running on, on launch day. Hopefully we're going to see it, you know, none of those problems come up again in Bad Company 2. No, I think that uh, that that situation was so revealing uh, to uh, EA as a whole that you know we've gotten the proper budget and the, we, we've been able to prove to them realistic expectations. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, sometimes when you're trying to project and you don't have numbers to back it up, mm -hmm. it's really hard to convince these other people that you know that's what it's going to be. Uh, unfortunately, they really want solid facts, and now they have them. So we're able to get the type of support that the game this big, and I think that that's going to have this impact on day one. Uh, we're we're ready. We want you to do what you do best. Be unorthodox. Be lethal. Can you do that for me? We can do that, sir. Single player is based on everything that multiplayer stands for. So it's the sandbox experience, the vehicles, weapons, and of course, the squad is back. A simple support mission, they said. It's a fake what you found. Fake, sir? Dummy. We think it's a dry run. Nothing's ever really that simple, though. Today we're you know, trying to show bits and pieces of the single player campaign for the first time, and hopefully people will be shocked with what they see. You know, what was it, why was the decision made to, to not talk about single player for so long? I think the, the original plan was to you know, show people that this is a true Battlefield game. Battlefield Bad Company 1, uh, for some people, wasn't Battlefield because they didn't see that in the marketing campaigns and they didn't see it shine through in, in the stuff we actually showed. So we just want to make sure that you know, we're still DICE and we're still masters of building Battlefield games. And to prove that, we've been showing you know, bits and pieces of the multiplayer and how that has been improved since the last time. Uh, so, you know, the heritage of Battlefield is secured with us. And then, of course, we've been building in the background. We have a huge team building a single player and making sure that that's you know, up to par with the multiplayer. Uh, and, you know, you get all the good pieces of the multiplayer features uh, in the single player as well. And what's the setting? How, how long did it take place after the original game? This is, this is some time after the original game and the squad is being put on quite boring you know, uh, operative duties in, in the north of Alaska on the borders to Russia. 
uh, the, the, the war has kind of spread from Europe over to closing in on America. So the Russians are actually uh, moving into South America, closing in on the US borders, as well as moving over Alaska and closing in on US from north. Uh, so the squad is actually uh, bumping into evidence on that the Russians are building this super weapon and they get sent off to South America to find out more about it and we kick off from there. They're building a weapon. What we know about it so far scares the shit out of us. What we don't know scares us a lot fucking more. Now, one of the things that we were lucky enough to see was uh, was the PC version today, which uh, it seems like you've you know customized and you know, built from the ground up to for the for the uh, strength of the machine. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what PC owners can expect? In general, I would say that the PC audience will get the true PC Battlefield title. It's not a you know, quick port to just you know, get a PC product out. We know that we have a heritage of PC products. We know what Battlefield stands for. So we have a full team working only on the PC version of the game. We are still making Bad Company 2, so it's still the same storyline, it's still the same you know, base maps. Uh, you have more players, of course, on the PC version. Uh, there are some, you know, a lot of rendering features that couldn't be done on the console. It takes into account all of the benefits of a PC machine, including the control input and so on and so forth. Again, we were lucky enough to see today was this implementation of uh, 3D through NVIDIA technology, which is looking great. Tell us about uh, the implementation of that and what people can expect. We've actually been working quite tightly with NVIDIA on this and the reason why we want to implement it is of course that you know, 3D is really cool. There have been examples of movies that have proven this lately um, and it actually adds to the gameplay depth of the game. You actually get more detail from the depth perspective of the 3D glasses. Uh, one of the, the big questions from PC owners will be, you know, is, the, is the technology scalable though? Can you still play it on a, a variety of machines? Yes. Uh, the, the, Again, the focus for PC is that it's scalable, so we actually have support for DX9, DX10 and of course DX11 to get the most out of your machine. If you spend money on your PC, you should get something back. You also have all the rendering, cool rendering features, scalable resolutions and aspect ratios, stuff like that. So yes, we're supporting a lot of PC specific things. And the, the, the PC version will thankfully come out at the same time as the, as the console versions this time around? Yes, absolutely. That's also been a key for us that we, when we developed this, we wanted to be out on all platforms so we don't have to you know, wait another six months for a specific version. You know, we want to treat our PC audience with respect because of the, the heritage we have with the PC audience. And Battlefield Bad Company 2 is out uh, on what platforms and when? Uh, Bad Company 2 is out on PC, 360 and PS3 on the 4th and 5th of March this year, depending on where you are in Europe. Great stuff. Thanks for your time, Patrick. The first Assassin's Creed 2 DLC finally launches this week, so we gave Luke Anderson his virtual passport and packed him off to check out the Battle of Forley. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. What is it, Leonardo? What does he do? I could no more explain this than explain to you why the Earth goes around the sun. You mean the sun around the Earth? It's Anyone who's played Assassin's Creed 2 will know that Ubisoft's action-adventure game is a rich tapestry of intrigue, conspiracy and drama, set in 15th century Italy. Fans of the game will be pleased to know that the adventure continues with the release of the first downloadable content this week, called Battle of Forley. We dived into this dazzling world to find out more. As the name suggests, the new missions take place in and around Romagna and the city of Forli, and focus on helping Caterina Sforza and Niccolo Machiavelli protect the city from a Templar attack. Well, well, look who it is. Madonna. I thought when we met you were a bit special, but an assassin, hmm. You may remember Caterina as a damsel in distress that you needed to rescue with a gondola when you first arrived in Forli, and with the addition of this DLC pack, 
Both her and Forley now have an important role in the world of Assassin's Creed 2. In addition to those two characters, your Uncle Mario and Leonardo da Vinci make brief appearances in the game. In Battle of Forley, you return as Assassin's Creed 2's main character, Ezio Editore di Firenze. And if you haven't completed the previous missions in the game, it's recommended that you do so before playing Battle of Forley, as it contains some minor plot spoilers. Thank you for everything, my oldest friend. Battle of Forley and the second DLC pack, Bonfire of the Vanities, slot in as sequence 12 and 13 in the Assassin's Creed 2 continuum, the two corrupted data files the game skips just before the finale. After capturing a sacred artifact called the Apple of Eden from Templar ringleader Rodrigo Borgia, you meet with Mario, Leonardo and Niccolo and agree to take the apple to Caterina Citadel in Forley for protection. Arriving there, you find the city under siege by the forces of Keko and Ludovico Orsi. I take it you would be the Orsi brothers. Ludovico and Keko at your service. The brothers have been hired by Borgia to retrieve the apple and a map that leads to codex pages which Katarina's Templar husband was working on. Katarina decided to have him bumped off and she's certainly not afraid to get her hands dirty. In fact, one of the most amusing parts in Battle of Forley is when she hurls insults at the guards occupying her city. Bastardi! You think you can threaten me? I'll give you nothing! You want my children? Take them! I have the instrument to make more! When you change your mind, they'll be in the village, outside the city! You have one hour! If saving Katarina and her city from harm wasn't enough for Ezio, the brothers kidnap two of Katarina's children as ransom for the Apple and Kodak map, so it's up to you to rescue them. The pack boasts six missions in total, and requires you to protect Katarina and Niccolo, defend Forley from invaders, rescue hostages before they're executed, and ultimately find and assassinate the Orsi brothers. With loose ends left untied at the end of the pack, it seems that Battle of Forley will segue into Chapter 13 of the game, which features the next DLC pack, The Bonfire of the Vanities. In addition to the missions, you also have access to a special memory, which allows you to pilot Defensi's flying machine over Forley and the surrounding countryside. As it doesn't take part in a mission, this experience is merely for pleasure, but it's rewarding to be able to see the city from a bird's eye view. The pack is short though, and it shouldn't take you more than two hours to get through the six missions. At 320 Microsoft points, the content is a tad on the expensive side, and the asking price is made less justified by the fact that Ubisoft has admitted it was meant to be part of the original game, but was removed due to time constraints. If you're itching to delve into some brand new missions, then Assassin's Creed 2 Battle of Forley is available to download now on Xbox Live and PlayStation Network. To find out more about Assassin's Creed 2, be sure to check out our full review and stay tuned for more on the upcoming Bonfire of the Vanities DLC pack. Time to give away some competition prizes now. Last time, you may remember that Nexon Europe and Logitech offered us over £150 of gaming accessories to give away, courtesy of the new MMORPG Mabinogi. All you had to do was answer this question. What is the name of the developer behind the game? The answer is DevCat, and our lucky winner is Connor Byrne from Woolwich in London. Congratulations, Mr. Byrne. Those PC accessories will be coming to you shortly. This week, thanks to the fine gentlemen over at Capcom, we have five copies of Dark Void to give away, along with a money-can't-buy figurine, which according to Leo Tan, friend of the show over at Capcom, are like 30-inch or something. To win, get your name and address on an email with the answer to this question. What is the name of the main character that you can play in Dark Void? If you think you know the answer, send it to competitions at gamespot.co.uk and we'll draw the winners on the next edition of the show. SPKX launches later in the year and we were invited to meet the developer to talk about its latest bike racing game. Italian developer Milestone has forged a reputation as a racing game specialist and today they've invited us out to Paris to see two new games, Superstars V8 and SPKX. So let's go and talk to the developers to find out more. This year we tried to, um, uh, to look at what people wanted on the forum and what the press said to us uh, after the last editions. And uh, we tried to put everything in the game, everything that people wanted from us. Um, we tried to, do, uh, to create a game that uh, could fit any type of gamers. So gamers who like uh, arcade games and gamers who also have a bike or like a super bike a lot and want something more uh, that feels more like a simulation. Um, we think we achieved all the goals because this year we put really a lot of things in SPKX. Uh, the main new feature are uh, the arcade mode 
that is a completely brand new uh, game mode um, we put for the first time in our game. Uh, since uh, until last year and last editions, we had uh, um, we had a uh, type of physics that could fit uh, to um, players that love simulation. Also, uh, but uh, maybe uh, it was too stressing for people that have a better feeling with arcade games. So uh, this year, when you will launch uh, the game, you will find in the first main menu. Um, a choice you will have to choose from simulation and arcade and we added also um, the career mode that features uh, the Vol Superbike license this means we will have up to 90, um, 90 uh, riders in the game from super sport, super stock and super bike category this is something that the fans will really really like and it is something that the player that um, approached the game for the first time will find uh, very, that is something very good, really good because there are a lot of content in the game you can have fun with a lot of riders, teams, bikes we have 14 um, manufacturers that spread from BMW, Ducati, Honda, Triumph uh, and this is uh, really bikers heaven. Speaking about the career mode, you will be able to create your own custom rider. Uh, you will create your rider customizing his name, his face, his helmet, his um, rider, his height, his riding position while he will be on the bike. Uh, you will have to manage all your career by, uh, playing several seasons. You will uh, fir at first sign a contract with the team uh, on the super sport category. Uh, probably at the beginning only um, not competitive teams will ask uh, you to join them. Uh, then going through the career you will be able to uh, take part at some tests during sessions and during race weekends. You will be able to chat your engineer with your um, team manager in order to improve your bike. Uh, talking about the arcade and simulation mode, uh, we try to deliver the players uh, an arcade mode that is still tuned and tweaked to be very fast paced, very easy to control. While in simulation mode uh, you are allowed to tweak, um, to tweak more options. For example, uh, we created three um, I am free presets for the simulation mode. You have simulation low, medium, and full. Uh, the simulation low is meant to um, to capture the arcade gamers that maybe have uh, played a lot with the arcade uh, side of the game. Maybe they should they would um, like to try even the simulation mode, so they can start with simulation low. Um, start they can start to um, understand what is the difference between the arcade, what is uh, the new behavior that they feel. Uh, from the bike. Then uh, uh, you can move to medium and full. We separated the, the physics settings uh, from uh, the other race options. For example, you can choose to have uh, real rules uh, or a manual transmission but uh, um, low simulation setting. And you can choose to have full simulation setting but automatic uh, uh, rider movement or automatic transmission. So you can really find yourself at home, you can really customize your experience to have what you're